This is the first of many smoking guns that we will show you. Hey, what's up everybody? NEXT here and welcome to the Adept Expeditions YouTube channel. In celebration of 420, I thought it would be appropriate to upload one of many smoking guns that you'll be seeing on this channel. Let's get into it. How hard would you say to start this to car? Oh, very hard. So I say it's pre dynastic Cartouches added later. Look again yeah, exactly. at the cartouches. Yeah. This is pre-dynastic. It's not representing, it's a generic statue. It doesn't represent any such king or uh, that they say it is. But look at them. That's brother and sister. She has chosen him. She has chosen him. Look at the She's, hands. Look at the hands. She's pushing him forward. Look this is pre-dynastic, showing the matriarch. And you can tell, actually, the technology, if you come closer, you can see. That is the original carving. The symbol, that's a hieroglyphic symbol, right? Gorgeous. It's a hard relief. It's very hard, by the way. You have to carve all around it. So this can be, you know, obvious like that. But look down here. If you come closer. Inside. It's a scratch. Yeah. And it's, it's inside. Exactly. So you can tell that it's actually two different ages for that statue. To, to amplify what he said, that's what Hakim would teach. When you see raised relief or high relief, it's old kingdom or older. That's the original glyphs. When you see inside relief much, much later, even going up to Ptolemaic time. So <laughs> this is how we say you cannot date a piece by the writing, but you can date the writing. The piece is much older than the writing. This is the first of many smoking guns that we will show you. Okay, let's hit everybody can hear. Come on everybody, I'll wait for come you. Come closer everyone, Kemet. We are behind the boxes, come, come. You can see us? With me. Here they come, they're coming around. No, you can go. Troy, right. don't worry. Troy. So this is what we call the first of many smoking guns we will show you, that proves that could not be the technology that, that they say it was. Okay, this looks like a typical, what they say, sarcophagus, which means body eater, sarcophagus, Greek word, which means body eater, okay? That they would put a coffin in here in a body. This is, again, Susan will know exactly what the stone is. It is a form of cyanide granite, low, low quartz, but again, very hard, seven on the most scale, okay? So, looks typical, looks typical of what they did, but then we come around the back, and there's what it was doing. Come around this side. Come around this side. And I'll explain it more than once. Come around yeah, this yeah. side. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll do this more than once. So if you guys here, you guys come on in. This shows that they would cut the lid out of the same mother piece. This is going to be the lid on the front. Okay? Same mother piece to keep the same vibratory signature because resonant sound is most important. Now you see the example of a smoking gun of advanced, as what Chris Dunn would call, ancient advanced technology. Look at here, how they were cutting the lid, okay? Cutting through granite like it was butter. But if you can see the operator, male or female, lost control of the tool, and it went off to the side, and they stopped the work. Unlike the Romans who would come later, who would cut into pieces and reuse, commissions never did, except in dynastic times, because it had to be perfect at first, or they just left it. Thank God they left it for us to find, because this is the evidence. But there's more here to the advanced theory. This is called impact uh, uh, ultrasonic machining, meaning that a tool that is vibrating at thousands of RPMs with a diamond tip it puts out a sonic wave in front of the tool that softens the granite and makes it easier for the tool to follow. And you can come and you will all take pictures and see this yourself because it actually made a line in the granite for the tool to follow. But if you follow the line to the back, you will see that they drew the line here and it's off center because it wasn't completed. So he's trying to follow the line. Even they made mistakes. This is what's so important. And Yusuf would point this out often. The unfinished books in the Egyptian Museum. Yeah. This is one of the examples of the so-cuts 
and granite. Brian Foster too. We're using 360 centers, which I'll talk about the highest consciousness we've ever been to do this, but we're still human. We still made mistakes. They lost control of this tool. And they went off to the side and ended the work. But it's here for us to find. This is what Chris Dunn is in his second book and what we all talk about. We're going to show you so many more examples of this. This could not possibly done, be done in dynastic times, where they had copper chisels, copper tools, even bronze, even metal. Could not do this. This had to be, and again, we had a super engineer who came up with the theory and he gave it to Chris Dunn called impact ultrasonic machining. Ultrasound, meaning going at a very, pulling an ultrasonic wave that actually alters the physics of the stone and makes it softer to come. Come around, take your pictures. This is an amazing piece that very few people ever get to see. Sacred science, I mean, they did not separate spirituality and the physical. So in other words, everything was a spiritual experience. They understood vibration, they understood metaphysics and physics. It's definitely metaphysical. But this is superior engineering, superior engineering. And that's why it took a master like Chris Dunn to recognize it, who worked in the space industry. You can see that arc on there? I mean, yeah. you can see, and actually there's two of them on there where they cross cuts. Something was spinning. Something was spinning. And I forget how big that uh, we figured it out. I mean, it was like three meters or something. Wow. Perfect arc radius. It doesn't deviate which means it has to be a machine that's gonna go back and forth like that. You can't do this by hand. No matter how good a craftsperson you are, you cannot do this perfectly by hand. This is ultra machining, ultrasonic machining. It's like, like Chris, Chris, Dunn, Chris Dunn explains how it's done today. What they do is a CAD program. They feed it into a computer, and the computer just does the paper. Machine. Steven, where do you suppose the machines went? That's a great question. I mean, um, we're going to show the plates that Susan has redefined as metacentric plates, not schist. That's part of the machine. But that is the great mystery that they always ask us, what happened to the machines? They might have been reassembled and broken down used for other pieces. But we will find them someday. What do you think started this process here? Christopher Dunn explains this well in his book, the Lost Technologies of Ancient Egypt, Advanced Engineering in the Temple of the Pharaohs. What we are confronted with here is a deep mystery. We have seen how part of this lid is still attached to the bottom of the stone box. From the engineer's point of view, this is a clear-cut example of lost technology, and one that may have something to do with proprietary processes that the ancient artisans intended to keep hidden. Take another close look for yourself at the groove where the saw mark is truncated. Christopher Dunn writes, and I quote, The engineering context of precision where precision is not necessary indicates the existence of sophisticated tools. They have not been found in the archaeological record, but the existence of them must be taken into account when we consider the mountain of circumstantial evidence to support their use. The engineer goes on to say, In the case of the Serapium, the list of tools and instruments that are necessary to create the granite boxes had grown. We can say with certainty that exact measuring instruments existed, for this work and work at Luxor and Karnak could not have been accomplished without them. They are the most important and necessary tools for such work. The wooden squares, 
plumb bobs, and alignment instruments on display in the Luxor and Cairo Museum are incapable of giving even the most talented craftsman the information he needs to know that his work has achieved this kind of accuracy. Even if these boxes and monuments were crafted today with modern tools, such instruments are limited in what they can measure, and they most certainly cannot explain the precision and geometry that we will look at next. In the next chapter, we will examine artifacts that are similar in geometry and others with geometry that is more complicated than a simple box, but not as complex as the head of Ramses." End quote. In his next chapter, he goes on to detail and explain the great mystery of forgotten pieces of architecture located in the shadows of the Sphinx on the Giza Plateau. If you would like to learn more about lost technologies in ancient Egypt, I would highly recommend reading Christopher Dunn's book, again entitled Lost Technologies of Ancient Egypt. Ancient advanced technology has become a very popular subject on YouTube. A lot of people talk about this. But few can provide an in-depth analysis and explain it from 50 years of professional experience in engineering, manufacturing, toolmaking, and even space-age precision in the way that Chris Dunn can. And personally, as an independent researcher myself, I have always been interested in going straight to the source. And this is why I am very excited to have the actual pioneer of this theory joining me for our next tour of Egypt, the Lost Technologies and Symbolism Tour that you can join. I mean, what better way to explore evidence of lost ancient technologies than by traveling with today's leading experts right by your side? And who better than Christopher Dunn, the man who inspired them all? This tour is almost sold out, but we do have a few spaces left. So at the time of recording this video, it's not too late. You can still secure your spot by registering today at AdeptExpeditions.com. Now, if you're not entirely ready to travel, I understand not everyone is ready to get back out there and travel just yet, or even in financial position to travel right now. But you can still check out the website and get on our email list to receive updates and early bird discounts for future tours. But there really is no telling how many more opportunities you'll have to study the evidence in Egypt with the man himself. And this convergence of lost technologies and symbolism is distinct from my usual esoteric Egypt tours hosted by Adept Expeditions, so you will not want to miss this one. Thank you for watching everyone. Please consider sharing my work with your friends to help grow this channel. If you like what you see on this channel, you can always help support my effort in bringing you this work by contributing on Patreon. I'm trying to do this full time so I could really use the support. You can find a link in the description below. So please check out the page. You can see all the cool benefits I've put together for Patreons at various levels. All donations at any level is genuinely appreciated and will ensure that I continue doing this work uninterrupted. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please leave a comment below with your thoughts and please subscribe.